New order. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our many, many blessings, including the rights and freedoms that we so richly enjoy in this great country of ours, the, the right to meet this evening, to have our voices heard. We ask for your strength, guidance, and wisdom in our deliberations this evening, and that all are treated with dignity and respect, and in your son's name, amen. amen. That's right. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag. flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have a quorum this evening. Thank you. Uh, before we get into the agenda, I just would like to extend our most heartfelt condolences and uh, thoughts and prayers to the Tignor family and also uh, Alexandra's family in their uh, time of need. So, uh, Wanda, announcements. Yes, I just have one announcement. Uh, the Board of Supervisors voted to hold a special meeting on February the 5th at 4.30 p.m. to consider the three S Power special use cases. The location is set for here in the auditorium, although the board did ask um, for some research to be conducted to determine if there was a school site available. Um, so the board may yet make some changes to this, and that would happen on January the 23rd. Any other announcements? Uh, Mr. Newhouse, just to clarify, the, uh, the board set that additional meeting. It set it as part of its regular meeting, so it is set as a regular meeting. It's special in that it, it's intended to be only devoted to S power, but it is set as a, uh, a regular meeting. Thank you for that. As a joint meeting. Is that what the... No, a regular meeting. A regular, regular meeting of the board. Regular meeting of the board. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the next item on the agenda is review and approval of the minutes of January 2nd, 2019. I trust all commissioners have had a chance to uh, review them. Uh, any uh, comments? Uh, hearing none, I will take a motion. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Hearing no opposed, the motion passes. Uh, moving on to the next item is unfinished business. Uh, S Power Site A substantially in accord review. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The next three items are all similar. They are for the three special, or excuse me, the three S Power sites. Uh, the Code of Virginia requires that the Planning Commission review solar energy facilities that are not shown in the comprehensive plan to determine whether the location, character, and extent of the facility are substantially in accord with the comprehensive plan. Um, this is a code section that's often re referred to as 2232 reviews, and the Planning Commission is familiar with doing these along with the Capital Improvement Program, looking at county facilities to determine whether they're substantially in accord. While the 2232 review is separate from the special use permit process, the use cannot be established with only a finding of substantially in accord. Establishment of the use requires approval of a special use permit and any conditions that are approved by the Board of Supervisors that become integral to the facility. They essentially become part of its zoning. While the review of Site A was originally bundled with SUP 18-0001, Procedurally, the code does not allow concurrent review. Therefore, we broke the review out separately from the special use review. S-Power has proposed a 400 megawatt solar energy facility known as Site A on 5,200 acres in western Spotsylvania, of which approximately 2,800 acres are proposed to be disturbed in the construction of the facility. Could I have the floor computer, please? Staff offers the following information related to the Planning Commission's determination of whether Site A is substantially in accord with the comprehensive plan. Again, this is a, a high-level review, and in particular, you're looking at the location, the character, and the extent of Site A. Under location, the comprehensive plan specifically re references renewable energy generation and or solar energy facilities in three locations in the plan. The first two policies are in the introduction and vision chapter in which the county encourages innovative land uses as a business-friendly community 
with a focus on local job creation and identifies agricultural and rural areas as appropriate for renewable energy generation. In the land use chapter, the policy statement related to all land uses is that renewable energy generation facilities, such as solar, geothermal, or wind, should be sited and designed to minimize detrimental impacts to neighborhood properties or neighboring properties' uses and roadways. The site is located in an agricultural and rural area near both an existing transmission line and a substation with adequate capacity. The location of Site A appears to be substantially in accord with the comprehensive plan. Under character, the facility is proposed in an area characterized by low density residential development, neighborhoods with rural character, agricultural and forestry uses. While the use will cover a large acreage, it will also have a low profile to the ground, have limited public road frontage. Appropriate setbacks and buffering will help to maintain the rural character of the area and provide transitions to the surrounding uses. Establishment of the use would have two distinct phases, the construction phase and then the operations phase. The construction phase would be the disruptive phase of the two, um, although it is temporary in duration. Conditions are recommended that minimize the disruption to the surrounding community. Once the operations phase begins, the impact on the surrounding community is significantly decreased and its character should be in keeping with the surrounding area, especially as time passes and landscaping has the opportunity to mature and further screen the facility from view. The character of Site A appears to be substantially in accord with the comprehensive plan. The final item is extent. The facility is proposed on 5,200 acres with a disturbance area of 2,800 acres. The proposed facility covers a large land area that has historically been under forestry operations. When evaluating a public facility or utility for extent, typically what we're looking at is, is the facility of the right size to serve the needs of those it's supposed to serve? Um, and typically what we're looking at is a public facility use. Um, in this case, it's a little bit different because this is being developed for corporate um, customers. Uh, so while the proposed facility encompasses a large land mass, there is no specific policy in the comprehensive plan that recommends limits on the sizes of individual uses or projects. Um, as noted before, conditions are proposed with this SUP, the, the associated SUPs that help to mitigate impacts associated with the project size. Uh, this, the extent of the facility that encompasses Site A appears to be substantially in accord with the comprehensive plan. And that concludes my presentation. Any uh, questions or comments on this item? Site A substantially in accord review. Hearing none, we'll uh, take a motion uh, which is required for this application. Site A, substantially in accord and review. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve. May I have a second? Second. We have a second. Uh, any comments? Discussion? Uh, just to clarify that, uh, um, Mr. Smith, uh, the, the motion uh, to approve, I believe, encompasses um, finding that the uh, uh, Site A um, project is in substantially accord with the comprehensive plan. Is that your motion? Th that is correct, yes. Thank you. And we have a second on that motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, I will make a roll call vote. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Smith is a yes. Mr. Thompson? No. Mr. Thompson is a no. Mr. Medina? No. Is a no. Mr. Ms. Maddox? Is a yes. Mr. Bullock? Yes. Mr. Bullock is a yes. Ms. Carter? Yes. Ms. Carter is a yes. Chair votes no. Motion fails. Uh, may I have an alternate motion? I'll make a motion that the, the uh, application is not in accord. It is I'll ask you Does this pass? Mr. Chairman? Wait, did I count that wrong? 4-3? I have four yeses, three noes. Very good. My, my mistake. Thank you. So the motion does pass. The second item is Site B, substantially in accord review. Again, 
the Planning Commission is tasked with determining whether Site B is substantially in accord with the Conference of Plan in terms of location, character, and extent. SPOWER has proposed a 30 megawatt solar energy facility known as Site B on 245 acres in western Spotsylvania County, of which approximately 200 acres are proposed to be disturbed in the construction of the project. Uh, the analysis that I would provide to you is generally the same as what you heard under Site A. Uh, this Site B is the smallest of the three sites um, under consideration this evening. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. My apologies again. Uh, any questions for Wanda on Site B? Uh, hearing none, I'll take a motion on Site B, substantially in accord review. Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion to approve Site B, substantial in accordance review. Do I have a second? Again, this, this motion, Mr. Smith, is to find that it is in substantial accordance with the comprehensive plan. That's correct. We have a second by Mr. Bullock. Any discussion? I will call the vote. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Thompson? No. Mr. Medina? Yes. Ms. Maddox? Yes. Mr. Bullock? Yes. Ms. Carter? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion passes. Six to one, I have. C. And this is the final site, Site C, for determination by the Planning Commission of whether it is substantially in accord with the Conference of Plan in terms of location, character, and extent. Floor computer, please. S Power has proposed a 70 megawatt solar energy facility known as Site C on 905 acres in western Spotsylvania County, of which approximately 500 acres are proposed to be disturbed in the construction of the project. Again, staff's presentation related to the location, character, and extent would be substantially the same as the last two. Um, and this site, Site C, is the um, medium-sized of the three sites. Thank you very much. Any questions from Wanda in regard to Site C? Hearing none, I will take a motion on Site C. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that uh, we approve uh, Site C substantial in accordance review. Do I have a second? Any discussion? I will call the vote. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Thompson? No. Mr. Medina? Yes. Mrs. Maddox? Yes. Mr. Bullock? Yes. Ms. Carter? Yes. Tra uh, chair votes yes. Motion passes 6-1. Thank you very much. Moving on to the next item on our agenda are the special use permits, SUP 18-0001. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What we thought we'd do is walk through the conditions. Um, Patrick will display them. These conditions are currently updated online, and um, there were some last minute changes made uh, just this afternoon, so we provided you each with a paper copy. What I'm going to do is hit on the highlights, um, the major changes, especially the ones recommended by the Planning Commission at their last meeting. Um, and what you'll see on the screen before you is anything that is struck through or underlined is a staff edit. Uh, a lot of it is typos, internal consistency, terminology, just ensuring that a condition is uh, clear and enforceable. And then the yellow areas are the items that the Planning Commission requested that we edit for this meeting. Um, so I'm going to start in general. Um, beginning on number six. And this is a request by the Planning Commission. We amended the condition related to insurance to require a, two, a review every two years and increases as necessary to protect the county. The next one is number nine. We linked the proof of insurance to the land disturbing permit rather than the issuance of the special use permit. There was a concern that that was just too soon and the property would not be owned by the applicant at that time. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Number 13, 
added a prohibition of photovoltaic panels manufactured using Gen X based on the applicant's confirmation that Gen X is not used in the manufacturing process for the panels? Mr. Chairman, yes. While, yes, while we were there at the panel discussion, um, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I'd like, I'd like for us to, I'd like to see us put in um, to this that uh, no cattail panels will be used at silicone only. Do we have that note? Is there any discussion on that request by Mr. Smith? I'm in total agreement with that. Very well. All right. The, the next item you'll see is a struck item in yellow is number 12, the former number 12. Um, we removed the vehicle speed condition. That was an internal to the site condition related to vehicle speeds. Going on down to number 18. This is a, a change that staff implemented. Um, we eliminated the applicant's decommissioning plan as a conditioned document. Due to the large number of changes that were recommended by staff, it would have been very difficult to marry up the document itself with all the changes. Um, so instead, what happened was we took, the, took all the things we agreed with from the plan, included them as conditions along with the staff conditions. So everything related to the decommissioning plan and the bonding is now included here within the recommended conditions. There are no questions on A general. We'll move on to B construction. So on B construction number two, the decommissioning section is fairly long. <coughs> uh, there was conversation about the term wide load and a um, reference to what the DMV uses for a definition of wide load. Um, what I found was that the reference should be oversized load. So we have referenced the DMV definition, and that is um, related to the um, permitting through a hauling permit by DMV. So that's the change to that condition. Number nine. Um, we've disallowed any construction on, side, on Sundays except for replacement of broken panels. At the last meeting, the Planning Commission really focused on the pile driving and eliminating that on Sundays. Um, but in polling several planning commissioners, I, I found that the intent was to prohibit all construction on Sundays. So we went ahead and, and included the condition that way. Yeah, the only comment I have on that, Wanda, is uh, I believe we have language in other conditions where we require them to make erosion control repairs within 24 hours. And if that occurs over the weekend, they ought to have that ability to take care of those issues to be compliant. Okay. All right, number 10. Um, there was discussion about the uh, public liaison that the applicant would provide and the advertising in the Freelance Star. <clears throat> Um, and instead now it is to be advertised via through the internet with notification to the county's public information officer so that the county can also get the word out. Number 14 uh, has to do with the joint construction traffic reaction team and we have included the sheriff and the state police as members should they wish to participate. Uh, so if there are no Questions under B, construction. We'll move on to C, erosion and sediment control. Under C, 1, C, uh, we removed the specific crew member requirements for the remediation crews. So remediation is still required, but just the specific composition of those crews has been eliminated. And then under number two, we have clarified that the 400 acres of disturbed area is a rolling area and that once land is stabilized, as determined by the um, zoning administrator, the, um, that land should no longer count towards that 400 acre requirement. The 
zoning program administrator. The, the program administrator, not the zoning administrator, yes. All right, that's it for uh, C, erosion and sediment control. Uh, we can move on to D, burning, fire, rescue, and emergency management. Condition two prohibits the burning of timber waste or any other matter. Um, staff did note concerns in the executive summary for the cases this evening related to mulch piles and the potential for fires. Um, so as a result, staff is recommending a few additional conditions related to the management of mulch fires, or excuse me, the management of mulch piles to minimize the risk of fires. Um, so those are now as uh, condition 11. And so there are a number of items there um, requiring, uh, that, that dictate uh, location of the mulch storage, uh, how high and wide and long any uh, piles could be, um, that it cannot be compacted, uh, separations between them, uh, re requiring them to be monitored for moisture content, um, turning and reassembling them within certain time periods. Um, and, uh, and again, monitoring them for internal temperatures and then properly addressing those situations. If I may, Wanda, does this include not using mulch for berms? There is a clarification within the conditions elsewhere that says that berms shall be <coughs> earthen berms made of dirt, not mulch. Thank you. Wanda? Yes. Am I understanding that there will be no burning? Correct. Yes. Which le then leads to necessarily to the, uh, the mulch, um, which needs to be addressed, which kind of resulted in these conditions. So if you're not going to allow burning, obviously there'll be right. a lot of mulch that needs to be addressed. Okay. So that covers that section. If there aren't any questions, I'll move on to E, landscaping, maintenance, setbacks, and buffers. All right, um, condition three. It now provides for a consistent setback, no matter the use of the adjoining properties. Um, there was some discussion about changing the 350-foot setback, but the Planning Commission did not have a consensus on that. Uh, there was discussion about setback distance and the impact of landscaping and berms on noise dissipation, visual impacts, and the temporary temperature increases. While the county's consultant, Dewberry Engineers, could not recommend a specific setback reduction since it would require modeling various scenarios at specific locations around the periphery of the facility, taking into account several factors that it could affect the outcome, including panel groupings, topography, types of vegetation, prevailing wind directions, and height and composition of the berms. Uh, they did note that the setback would likely, likely vary in width to achieve the same result based on these various factors. Um, so they could not recommend, based on any scientific approach, without this modeling, a specific reduction in any setback. Um, to further discussion about setbacks, staff offers a few observations. Uh, considering the size of the facility, the topography of the area, and policies of the comprehensive plan, staff took a conservative approach in crafting the conditions related to setbacks. The 350-foot setback is the recommended setback to address noise, visual impacts, and temporary heat increases. And specifically related to the temporary heat increases, um, bright, sunny, hot days are when the largest heat increase may occur and the actual distance at which heat was observed to dissipate to ambient temperatures, which is within a half a degree, was at 328 feet. Um, Dewberry does agree in concept that landscaping and berming will aid in mitigating any temporary differential in temperatures. Um, and then as related to visual impacts, the Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation provides guidance that under most circumstances, a 300-foot strip of forest or the area provides adequate buffer to give a passerby or a homeowner the sense that the area is preserved in its natural state. And there was some discussion about our uh, current in our design standards manual, our transitional screening. Our transitional screening ranges between 25 feet wide and 50 feet wide. Um, the largest setback in A3 is currently a 100 foot side and rear setback for a sawmill. 
although it is important to note that a sawmill does require a special use, so setbacks and transitional screening may be conditioned to be wider by the Board of Supervisors, just as it is in this case. Um, so those are just a few items to consider as related to uh, if the Planning Commission wishes to establish a different setback than the 350 feet. Continuing in this section, um, since the conditions supersede so much of the applicant's landscape document, um, again, just like the decommissioning plan, we pulled out some of the items and incorporated them as specific conditions within here. Um, and we did uh, maintain the applicant's invasive species management plan as being a condition document. Under 7.0, the landscape bond is now a three-year term instead of the two-year term it was previously, which is the code requirement. We didn't have anything until we get to, oh wait, uh, number, I might be a little out of order here. I have number, f oh wait, I don't have it underlined. Under biological F is the next section. But I want to back yes. up one second. Under the uh, landscaping bond, yes. um, I had made a comment about a maintenance period. Is that intended to be here? Or That's right. That, so for a three-year period, um, the county holds a bond for the landscaping to allow it to establish. And, and <coughs> only once it's established does the bond is the bond released so okay that, but it, it, my concern is um, that the language of that bond include provisions that the uh, that s power as part of the maintenance replace you know yes. dead and dying yes, landscaping that, and things like of, that is that yeah that that is it, part of okay very good yes thank you so the next section is F biological <coughs> and under number five clarified that fertilizer composition needs to be based on soil testing and then we didn't have any substantive changes till you get to H water and that one simply requires that um, only public water be used during all phases of the project. And that completes the review of the conditions. Yes, ma'am. How many conditions did, did we have? <coughs> well, I haven't counted them all up individually. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to say because we have them broken down into the sections and the, the, the numbering restarts in each section. It is around 20 pages once we accept the changes More than to this document. Am I correct? Possibly. Okay. All right. Any, any other questions for uh, Wanda or Steph on the uh, conditions? Um, I would presume the motion. Do we need a motion to include as ne as is, or can we? I, I think we have enough uh, direction to be able to add uh, tonight. Um, Very good. To t add the, uh, the the prohibition on the uh, the CAD tail panels. Um, so if there's no more direction as to anything else you want changed with respect to the conditions, um, I think you can move on to the next one. And then once we uh, once we add those conditions, we'll bring it back down here for you uh, in the document form so you can, you can vote on each of the special use permits. Very well. Mr. Chairman, did we, did we address, though, the one, not concerned, a question you had about the ENS repairs allowed on Sundays? Was that going to be, is that incorporated somewhere else as opposed to taking out, was it uh, Section B9? Doesn't allow any except for the repair of yeah. established arrays. Do we need to add anything there for? ENS repairs. It, that needs to be added. We can't prohibit them from making repairs that we dictate are required within 24 hours. If the, if the commission's in agreement, we can certainly also yeah. make that change? Yes. Okay. Yep. 
Any other clarifications or comments? Very well. Do you want to go on to the other conditions, or do we? How do you want to proceed here? Uh, if, if I might, just add one clarification. Just make sure I have it correct before uh, before we draft. Um, when you talk about the ENS work, that is just uh, the ENS work to address um, a, a storm, you know, situation where there's there's damage or cleaning out that needs to be done. It's not the actual, you know. Uh, stabilization, the normal stabilization that no, happens during construction is to address those types of issues, correct? Right, that's correct. Okay. We have a statement in there that uh, repairs may be uh, required to be completed within yes. 24 hours, so based gotcha. off county inspection. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Any other comments? And per the last motions, uh, the, the uh, previous meeting and the motions, we had carried for these same comments into the other SUPs, correct? Yes, and so my presentation would be exactly the, the same, same for the so, other two. Okay, so these, uh, these, uh, these revisions and edits would apply to the other SUPs? Yes. All right, uh, moving forward, I think we can move forward to um, uh, the uh, motion on SUP, unless there is any other discussion, we can move forward to the uh, motion on SUP 18-0001. Mr. Newhouse, uh, I think um, if, if you all are ready, you know, after those conditions are added, if you all are ready to, to consider those, um, I would recommend that you uh, take a recess so we can go make the changes, come back, and you all be ready to vote. Very, very good. We'll do that. T how much time do you need? Um, Ten minutes? Fifteen? Uh, just, I would recommend that you just have a, uh, a call a recess and we'll work. Come back when you, all right. Come back as soon as possible. Very good. I'll call a recess until you come back with the uh, conditions. And that, that's not necessarily related to drafting, but some technology we got to get straight. Very good. Thank you. So we'll, uh, we'll adjourn for a few minutes. We're going to recess for a few minutes. If you all take your seats, we'll uh, call the meeting back to order, please. Thank you very much. I appreciate everybody's uh, patience uh, while we take care of business here. It's going to be the same on each of them, right? So uh, the changes to the uh, conditions were Yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I'll go over those right now. Um, so if you uh, turn your packets, please feel free. Um, there are packets down there available. Obviously, these changes have just been made. Um, there's a new number 14 under uh, the general section uh, A. Uh, it reads uh, photovoltaic panels containing cadmium telluride, also referred to as CADTEL, are prohibited on the property. Uh, then moving on to, it is page Page 10, uh, this is under construction, B9A. Uh, the uh, condition now reads, um, and this contains some previous language, the act of replacing a broken panel on already established array, even if located within 400 uh, acres of then currently disturbed land area, and the repair work required to be undertaken within 24 hours as set out in sections C1C, C2C, and C3C herein shall be exempt from this provision. So that takes out the uh, requirement for uh, time limitation. So those, those are the two changes uh, requested. Uh, those changes are consistent throughout uh, each of the three SUPs. Um, and I think that is now ready for your consideration. The consideration, uh, the conditions are now ready for your consideration. Uh, if I may, I have one question. How do we determine what's broke and what needs to be fixed within 24 hours? Do we have some way of monitoring that? Are you talking about the 24-hour uh, the uh, repair? Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe uh, we have inspectors. I would defer to uh, our, our zoning inspector or program administrator, uh, Richard Street or Kim Pomato. Uh, but I believe uh, inspectors will be on the project um, on behalf of the county. 
uh, to, uh, to inspect those um, uh, requirements. Also, they ob obviously have the benefit of knowing when those types of rain events occur uh, and how much rain has fallen so that they can, at that point, go out and inspect, see if there are any issues, and see if those requirements have been met. Now, does this also in uh, include just regular maintenance breakdowns? Something happens, something's not working, and it's still required to repair No, it, it, this is only uh, with respect to the, the requirements. Damage to the panels. The, the requirements that we've set out that, said that require 24 hours, uh, as the, the chair said, um, it would be unfair to require the 24 hour repair and then not allow them to go out in there and do it. So it's limited to just those, uh, those activities that are required within 24 hours okay. under these conditions. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on the conditions? All right, hearing none. I will move to uh, request a motion on SUP 18-0001. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I make a motion that we move forward with special use permit 18001 to the Board of Supervisors with recommendation of denial. So I second that. I have a second. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing no other uh, request for discussion, I'll move to the uh, vote. Uh, Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Aye. Mr. Medina. Yes. Ms. Maddox. No. Mr. Bullock. Yes. Ms. Carter. No. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. By a vote of five to two. Moving on to the second item on the agenda, uh, excuse me, um, I would make a, a request that the conditions be forwarded to the Board of Supervisors for their consideration. SUP 18-0002, um, the uh, conditions again apply by record. Uh, if there's no further discussion on this application, I'll take a uh, motion. Mr. Chairman. I make a motion that we move uh, forward with special use 18-002 to the Board of Supervisors with a recommendation of denial. I'll second. I have a second. Any further discussion on SUP 18-0002? Hearing none, I'll call a vote. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Thompson. Aye. Mr. Benito. No. Ms. Maddox. No. Mr. Bullock. Aye. Ms. Carter. No. Chair votes no. Motion fails. I, as chair, I'll ask for a uh, new motion. I want to. I'd like to make a motion that we refer. Am I doing this right? Move it forward with the um, to re, to request to the board of supervisors with the motion that we would approve. Is that right? Paul? That's correct, and that's with the uh, recommended conditions. With the recommended conditions, that's correct. Second. So, so we have a second. Any further discussion on the uh, motion to move the application forward with a uh, recommendation for approval? Hearing none, I will call the vote. Mr. Smith. No. Mr. Thompson. No. Mr. Medina. Yes. Ms. Maddox. Yes. Mr. Bullock. No. The vote is no. no. Mr. Carter. Uh, Ms. Carter. Yes. The chair votes aye. I have it one, two, three, four to three. Motion passes. Moving forward to SUP 18 003. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I make a motion that we move forward with special use permit 18 0003 to the Board of Supervisors with recommendation of denial. I second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I will call the vote. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Bedina. Yes. Ms. Maddox. No. Uh, Mr. Bullock. Yes. Ms. Uh, Carter. No. And the chair votes no. The uh, motion passes four to three by my vote. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Hold on, uh, Mr. Chair. Paul, is that correct? It's five to three. Four to three, okay. Four to um, three. And would you like uh, uh, Wanda to also forward the conditions? Yes, for the, yes, yeah. please. I'd like to uh, have the conditions forwarded to the Board of Supervisors for their consideration. 
Uh, before we move on to the next item on the agenda, new business, I would like to thank uh, the uh, planning staff uh, for their yeoman work on these applications. I know uh, the amount of time you put into it, and um, I can speak for the Planning Commission with our sincere appreciation for you, Wanda, Patrick, and the staff in this. And I also uh, want to uh, thank the public for uh, their input as well. Uh, we, we really appreciate uh, everything you had to say, and uh, we, we sincerely took that into consideration. And I also want to thank the applicant uh, for their efforts as well. Um, to me, this is what, uh, you know, America is all about. So thank you very much. Like yes, Ms. Carter. Regardless of how I voted tonight, I still want to say thank you to many of you. You made me study hard. You taught me a lesson, and that's why we have no burning. And that's why that we have the uh, panels have been changed. And that's why that transportation has been looked at very thoroughly. And I was, my thought when I started this was I was really concerned about the burning. The burning bothered me more than anything else I know of. And that's because of public health and welfare of everyone. I have a problem with breathing myself and I know what it could do to others. And therefore, I appreciate that there will be no burning, that the applicant has agreed there will be no burning. And he, they also have agreed a transportation issues that would be bad. And however, and the panels at now tonight, that has been decided. And many of you who I met with, who sent emails, these are concerns that you bought before us, and these are concerns that I work with very hard. But however, I feel like my concerns have been met, and I do hope that we can all move on, and as we are Americans, and that's what we should do. And so therefore, I thank each of you for your input. I thank the applicants for their time and input, and I especially thank the staff there were many times that many of you addressed me, and I thought, what are they talking about? Staff had to interpret that, and they spent many hours doing so. And I just want to say that these are the reasons. It's because my request was made, and I feel that your health and your welfare will not be disturbed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other questions, comments, before we move on to the next item? Uh, new business. Is there any new business uh, at this one? Thank you very much. Uh, at this point, I will open it up for public comment. Uh, we can only take comments on anything uh, new and uh, not in regard to the previous applications. Anybody wish to speak this evening? Seeing none, uh, thank you very much. At this point, I will make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you.